when we talk about creativity, people tend to think in the same general area, either painting or video art or some type of performance. But when we talk about creativity in the classroom, it's not as popu popular of an idea. It's not really promoted in our general society in the U.S. to have creativity in the classroom unless you're looking in a direct art field. So when I talk about creativity in the classroom, what I'm really trying to say is it's about having no experiences and learning to be adaptable for the future so that it can be implemented in any job across the board. So a big question that comes up, or rather a statement, is that I'm just not creative. It's not something that I do. I don't draw. I don't paint. So, but that's not really what we're looking at here. What we're trying to implement is the ability to be flexible to complete tasks at hand in the work, work field. So trying to come up with as many possible solutions to a problem. So it's about the thought process and trying to create several solutions, as I was saying. Thinking outside the box really sets workers apart. A uh, 2010 survey of over 1,500 executives found that creativity is one of the most important basic skills in the business world today. So if you can see that business executives are starting to value this skill as something that they're looking for their top dogs to be kind of representing their company as. They're trying to be innovative and looking forward into the future. With all the technological advances going on, we need to learn how to adapt into our society, into communication that we are starting to form in new and different ways. So really, it's not a matter of, am I creative or not? Am I able to paint or am I able to act? It's about, am I able to come up with solutions that others wouldn't think of in my line of work to push me to the top? Another thing that really comes up very strongly and resonates within pop culture and in our culture throughout is that there's no money in the arts. You become an artist, you're a starving artist. Creativity, why, why would we even invest in that? We're putting money into a dead field. But the thing is that The Atlantic in 2010, so about six years ago now, to only two years after the 2008 financial crisis and the housing market drop, over 35 million people were employed in the creative class jobs. So that equates to a third of total employment in the U.S. and over half of salaries and wages in the U.S. as of 2010. And in that same time range, it was projected that eight years in advance, in 2018, that uh, the artistic fields and the creative fields would have the greatest job growth. So by 2018, it was projected that uh, the creative class jobs would make up half of the U.S. employment growth, and, uh, adding 6.8 million jobs. So as you can see, there really is starting to be money in the arts because people are looking to the creatives to advance their business in, in advertisement, in design, and even in the science field. So they're looking at how many solutions can we come up with to our problems. We really need these creatives in here to think of things that other people wouldn't be thinking of. So what would I get out of it? That's, that's what students always want to know. That's what teachers always want to know. If I decide to make this potential investment, what would I get out of it? So as I was saying, we really are starting to need innovation. It's becoming a crisis. We've seen more problems in the past century that we have ever faced as a human population. So climate change that's rapidly expanding and people are becoming aware of it. Overpopulation, overcrowding, the population just keeps growing and growing. Where are we going to put these people? How are we not going to run out of space according to our lifestyles? Political tension that's always been happening since the dawn of our existence, but it's gotten to a point where we have these nuclear weapons that we could blow each other up at any second. So this political tension we need to learn how to handle. We need to learn how to manage with our creative sort of processes. Our natural resources are scheduled to be depleted by the middle of this century. Most of our natural resources, gasoline that we thrive on, that the U.S. economy is really built around, that our life is built around with our cars. We need these sort of innovative people to figure out where we're going with this. How are we going to sustain our lifestyle while still driving us forward? We need to adapt to our communication skills. As I was saying earlier, the, we have created so many new ways of communicating through social media, through text messaging, IMing, all of these new ways that we haven't seen 30 years before now, 40 years before now. So we need to learn how to evolve with our communication as well as with our physical needs. So this, this last sort of statement that I'm going to base this talk around uh, really breaks my heart because 
honestly, our biggest problem today is that but my school doesn't invest in creativity. Our, the problem that we're facing is the, the lack of support, the lack of funding in this field, not just in art departments, which are lacking across the nation, but also just in every single classroom, trying to teach these kids with, through different styles and using creativity in, this, in our learning processes today. So today, uh, the US dropout rate nationwide for high schools, public high schools, is 30% nationwide. In African-American communities or Latino communities, that number jumps to around 50%. In some Native American communities across the country, dropout rate is near 80%. And that's just unacceptable. There's no reason why this should be happening. And the main root of this is based around our lack of funding, because there's such an apathy built into our public school systems where these kids aren't having the ability to seek their passions. There, there's no creativity, there's no basis for it because of, uh, the, because of standardized testing. So really that is the root where apathy comes from is the standardized testing because if we're treating these kids all of the same way, they're going to be taking the same tests, they're going to be treated the same way. They're, people aren't built like machines. They need room to be able to learn and grow and find their passion. If we don't allow them to find their passion, this apathy is going to stem from that. And that's what's causing these dropout rates. And the sheer fact of the matter is that numbers do not equate to enriched experiences or a drive to succeed. And that's really where our problem lies. So if we don't start investing in creativity and driving our kids to find what they're really passionate about, the problem becomes that we may not have a way to li keep living in our society the way that we do today. We really need to learn how to invest in creativity in our classrooms.